Hey, welcome back to the Redneck. Today, today we're going to be replacing um, injectors on a 1992 Dodge D350 with a 5.9 Cummins, 6BT, whatever you want to call it, 12 valve. Um, we're also going to be addressing how to remove stuck injectors. This is an all original 1992 um, D350 with the 5.9, 5 speed manual, two wheel drive, um, dually with 32 or 35,000 original miles. Beautiful minty truck. It just smokes a little bit probably because it's been driven so little I want to say the injectors are gummed up a little bit. We tried to run a little cleaner through it. No avail So we ended up finding a cheap injector kit and then able to get actual genuine Bosch injectors for it The tools you're going to need for this job. Obviously you're going to need some new injectors This is a I believe M16 washer that we picked up just from a hardware store This is a lug nut we got at the parts store for these injectors. It's an M12 by 1.5 and this threads on here, we're going to use this to remove the injectors if they're stuck. This will uh, be important later. You'll see what we do with it. Also, it's, this is a, I believe, a three-quarter inch uh, pipe nipple that fits perfectly over the injector and sandwiches between the cylinder head. Once again, I'll show where this comes into play later. You need a 24 millimeter socket, 19 millimeter socket, some ratchet drives, a 10 millimeter, 17 millimeter wrench, and a few other miscellaneous hand tools, which you guys probably already have lying around if you're tackling this job. All right, let's get started. Grab our 17 millimeter wrench. Now you wanna relieve the fuel pressure. There's a few different ways you can do that. Um, another way is, I believe this has a sticking injector. So a lot of the fuel pressure's already been relieved. We've already done one, just to double check my method for removing the stuck injector. We've already done this one and no fuel pressure came out and we haven't started it since then, so we're not gonna worry about it. Might be a good idea to wear safety glasses since we are running at an operating pressure of 14 to 17,000 PSI of fuel. So first thing you want to do is grab your 17 millimeter wrench. I've already pre-loosened these just for video purposes. But you're going to want to loosen these. This one is tight. Good old knuckle buster right there. Another thing you're going to also want to do is remove this beauty cover. And then there's a 10 millimeter right here that allows this to be loosened up. And uh, you'll see when that's important later. And then we'll go ahead and loosen this one, which for the purposes of speedy video, it's already been loosened. Another thing you want to do is grab a 10 millimeter and this line right here needs to come off. So just loosen the 10 millimeter right there. Just trying to get it so you guys can see. Just taking out this little bolt and that's just a little 10 millimeter bolt comes out and then there is a sandwiched banjo uh, washer, I believe is what they call them. Just kind of snake this out. It's just a little U-shaped copper uh, piece with two washers on it. And as you can see, it looks like that. You want to make sure you get those off, otherwise they'll, they'll just fall down in there, which you'll lose them, you'll have to source replacements, that's no fun. Ask me how I know. All right, another thing we did, took this little 10 millimeter bolt out right here, kind of lets this whole rail wiggle. You want to do this so you're not pulling lines up. You don't want to bend them. Make sure we keep track of our bolts. You can kind of snake this out of the way. Obviously, you don't want to just go ripping on this thing, but you can see how you can shoehorn a socket in there. This pulls back just enough that you can do what you need to do without messing anything up. So, we will grab our 24 millimeter socket and we will try to just lift these up. You can bend them a little bit, you just don't want to go crazy. A little 24 millimeter just snakes right down in there. Make sure you zoom in pretty good on it too. And then half inch with an extension. Just gonna crack it loose. Not a whole lot of torque on these most of the time. And again, this is almost the perfect example. All right, now that that's off, this should come right out. Should is a keyword here. Yep, and there's our retaining nut. And sometimes you'll get lucky, and you can just grab the injectors and pull them out. But most of the time, especially on aging vehicles, you're not gonna be able to do that. So that is where literally three or four dollars at the hardware store comes into handy. 
went to our parts store, we picked up the uh, 12 millimeter by 1.5 thread lug nut. We picked up a M16 washer and this is, I believe it's a three quarter, that's what they call it right there if you can read that, three quarter close nipple or whatever. I'm, I don't do plumbing or home improvement, I fix cars so I don't really know much about that stuff. And as you can see that fits right there, make sure you get a close in on this, that fits perfectly between the injector and the cylinder head. And then we will take our washer, set it in like that, and then we'll take our lug nut and see if we can get it started. Which we can't, but these are not that stuck, but they are a little stuck. So we'll turn it to the conical end. Normally if these were really stuck and we had weak washers, I wouldn't recommend this. But this is kind of what's been working for me. So we get that on there. And that happens to be a 19 millimeter. So we'll grab 19 millimeter. And just get it on there. And you're just going to gently turn. You don't want to start cranking down. You want to make sure there's no resistance. You want to make sure you don't hear anything weird. You're going to hear it kind of popping and pulling a little bit. But no resistance. Nothing's changing or binding up. So basically what happens on these is this little nozzle here develops carbon from being in the cylinder head and it basically kind of welds itself in. So, I mean it's soft carbon so it'll just burn off and be sent through the exhaust system. All you're doing is just pulling it out of the little recess where it sits in the cylinder head. So we'll just keep slowly tightening this down. And I can feel it getting looser, which is good. So that should be out. So, there we go. There's our injector. Alright, so for those who don't understand what's happening, just a little visualization so you kind of have an idea when you run to the hardware store. Assume this is our cylinder head. And this is our injector clamped in the head. The injector's stuck here. So, I mean, yeah, you can grab on it with some pliers or vice grips. You don't really want to mess up the threads, especially if you plan on reusing them. Obviously, that's, that's no good. And you can kind of wiggle. A lot of times that doesn't work. So what you're doing is this pipe goes on here. Let's just move this up a little bit for demonstration. This pipe goes on here. And we have the threads there. So the washer and the lug nut go on. And as you tighten, this pushes against the cylinder head. So what that does is it just pulls the injector up. It's kind of hard to demonstrate, but this pushes against the cylinder head. This pulls on the injector. All right, so what you want to do when you pull these out, I might have forgotten to mention, you just want to make sure that the crush washer comes out with it. If not, usually you can use like a little pick or a little screwdriver or something and you can fish it out. Next thing we're going to do before we install our brand new injector with brand new sealing surfaces, you can probably make one of these with like some vacuum line or fuel line, but basically this is, this is from a Mighty Vac extraction device and I just stuff this rag into the shop vac. So this turns this into like a little bitty attachment for the shop vac. Like I said, you can probably use vacuum line or whatever you have laying around. Basically what we're doing, all of the crud that came off in the injector hole we're going to go ahead and just vacuum all of that out. Alright, so next thing we're going to do, new injector. I want to make sure our little crush washer's on there. And wait until we're ready to install before we take off the protective. We're going to leave this on just because of the way that we have to snake it in here. So, make sure our crush washer doesn't fall off. Alright, so we just put a little bit of heavy grease on here, just like some wheel bearing grease or something. Make sure you clean it all off of the tip. And then this keeps the, um, see the crush washer from falling off. So I'll just gently get that in there. And that slides in. And that little, uh, that little divot will line up. These only go in one way. They're not supposed to rotate. And we'll get our 24 millimeter. All right, so that's snug. A hand, now we'll just, you don't want to put a whole lot of torque on these, just enough to crush the crush washer. There is a torque spec, but you kind of get the feel for it after a little while. So that's on there. 
Now we can undo this cap and then we will install our fuel line and put our 10 millimeter back on there. All right, so now we're just tightening up our little 10 mil bolts. Pretty easy, nothing much to see here. Just making sure they're nice and snug, not going crazy. And then the next little thing, just a little snug. So all you gotta do, and this one was kinda hard to get in, but we got it done. Alright, job well done. Let's start it up.